Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Wilhelm Scream and welcome back to another day in Destiny 2 for some more Destiny 2 news and Witch Queen Season of the Seraph Intel. And this video is going to be a bit of a continuation of a previous one I posted on the best ways to farm out XP heading into a new season. Well, in this one, we're going to discuss those things in a little bit more detail, and I'm going to be giving you some examples of exactly the easiest ways to farm out above 1590 as quickly as possible. And this might be something you're interested in, at least in trying to get as high as you can on the power scale, because as of tomorrow, at the time of posting this video, we will be getting the new dungeon. So, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel and turn on the bell, the post notifications so you never miss out on any future Destiny 2 Witch Queen season of the Seraph content like this. And quickly, I'd like to give a big shout out to my buddy Mickey and a big congratulations on his new baby boy who is eight weeks old today. So before we get too into the weeds on the best tips, tricks, glitches, cheeses, and farms to get power for this season, I did want to briefly discuss the dungeon that will be released tomorrow, which, if you didn't know, is called the Spire of the Watcher. Now, this was disclosed today in the TWAB, but you could actually have known it on Tuesday because it was sort of leaked by Bungie themselves if you just went to the Moments of Triumph for 2022. You could see this Triumph, the Raid Runner Dungeon Diver, with all the raids and dungeons that were required to get this triumph listed. We have Vow of the Disciple, King's Fall, Duality, and of course the new one, Spire of the Watcher. In order to jump right into this dungeon tomorrow, you want to make sure that you have the Heresy mission done. This is the beginning mission that they sort of drop you right in for the season. Make sure you've completed this in order to not be slown up at all all tomorrow and you can just head right in but now on to the farms the things that are going to let you be the most successful in the new dungeon tomorrow well if you're like me obviously you've been probably hoarding up bounties as much as you can and completing your pinnacle rewards those are good now, for that little bit of extra stuff, once you sort of run out of content, you're going to need something else, maybe something you can do passively, just to get the most power possible for any upcoming content, not just the dungeon tomorrow, but more specifically that. And maybe you're somebody who doesn't get to play that often, maybe most of your playtime is consolidated to one day a week, and maybe it's tomorrow because you know there's going to be a new dungeon and you really want to take all the opportunity in order to actually jump in. So, the farms we're going to be discussing today can be done completely passively. Some of this might be revised stuff that I've talked about previously for some. Some of it is definitely going to be new to others. Now, also in my previous video, I did sort of breeze over the things that you could do this week. One of the things that I mentioned is probably the best AFK or passive XP slash weapons farm, I think, currently in the game. And no, I am not talking about the King's Fall dungeon. This is much easier than that. It's essentially an infinite thrall room. And that is the In the Deep mission. This is available to everybody this week on the moon. All you have to do is do the mission until this point. This is the very end. You'll scan the lectern. You might have to scan the lectern and then jump off the nearest ledge in order to sort of reset the encounter. But once you spawn back in, you will have infinite thrall in this area. Now you can set up with a Titan with Sol Invictus and just sort of sit here let Roaring Flames have their fun. Turn on a looped emote. This will keep you here for 20 minutes undisturbed. So like I said, it's passive. It's not a complete AFK because if you're here for too long and you don't move at all, you will get kicked to orbit. But with a looped emote, you can extend that time probably another 
five to ten minutes longer. I haven't really tested it, but I know that it's a bit longer than you would if you were just standing here. Now you can do this with other classes too. All you need to do is bring a warlock in here, proc devour, and just have your weapon continue to fire. Now that actually can keep you in here for even longer because you are continuing to fire. And if you can figure out a way to just keep the trigger held down on your controller, you're really not remaining still. You will be able to stay there for a significant amount of time. If you want a little bit of an inside baseball trick that doesn't require a macro, I just take a hair tie, like the one your girlfriend might use, or one that you might use if you have long hair. I do have long hair. Take it and wrap it around the controller, if you are using a controller, handle. It'll pin the trigger down, and you can go. Very passive. The next one is for the Expedition uh, Midas mission. This is actually one of the Cabal missions from, I think it was two seasons ago. At the very end of this mission, there is a way that you can just spawn Infinite Cabal and stay here. Do the exact same kind of farm. It's a little bit different because you have to occasionally throw your hammer in order to proc Roaring Flames. I would just throw it at the wall or throw it at the ground. Just so that the enemies that are surrounding you sort of get drawn to you a little bit. Because unlike the Infinite Thrall Room, not all of them are total melee enemies, though most of them are. And if you stand in the right spot, you'll still be able to aggro even the ones that shoot at you. So they will just sort of run at you. These are Cabal we're talking about. So both of these things are ways, if one is available to you, maybe one isn't, to just passively farm out XP and power for your artifact, as well as you can bring bounties with you into both of these places and do a whole bunch of XP farming for your season pass, but I think most specifically for your artifact in order to get the artifact mods that you might need for the dungeon tomorrow and also to get that passive power you will get with the artifact. And again, I wouldn't suggest doing any of these things until you've done your pinnacles first. Make sure you've done all your pinnacles, all the other powerfuls, all the actual gear rewards that you can get. If you're doing that on all three characters or even on one character and getting all the bounties you can carry for any set activity and you're trying to complete all of them, you'll probably be at about, I would say, 1586, maybe even 1590 power if you get lucky and you do a raid by the time the dungeon launches. But if you are just a solo player, which I'm considering most of the people who are watching this are, do all the pinnacles. That'll probably get to you somewhere to in the 1586 range. With the added XP, you'll definitely have, even at the lowest end, at least a four power bump just from the artifact, most likely a five to six. That's if you're getting all the bounties. Now this is if you're somebody who's playing super passively. I'm not talking about people who are playing every day or have played every day since the launch. I'm talking about somebody who might have a day this week in order to play and then head into the dungeon or hope to head into the dungeon. I myself obviously have a bit more power than this because I am playing a little bit more often, but that's me. And that's going to be it for all the information in today's video. Hopefully you found something in this video helpful. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel and turn on the bell, the post notifications, so you never miss out on any future Destiny 2 Witch Queen season of the Seraph content like this. You can also follow me on Instagram or Twitter. They'll be linked in the description box down below. Any of those things I just mentioned also enter you into any future giveaways on this YouTube channel. And I do want every thousand subscribers, so you never want to miss out. And of course, if you've watched till this point, if you want to leave a hashtag season of the Seraph in the comments section down below, or a big congratulations to my buddy Mickey, I will give you another entry into the next giveaway for this video. And remember, I do the secret hashtag, sometimes a secret word 
at the end of all videos. So you can always go back, check out another video, and of course do it again. And once more, I'm Wilhelm Scream. As always, we will see you next time.